Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 532. And the topic today is own your history or your history will own you. Yes, yeah, blatant in your face and actually will be insightful, I trust, when it gets the details. So before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I talk about this stuff. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day for the last almost two years now, starting in 2016 just about, so it's almost two years, I've done these talks on Facebook called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And so today's is episode number 532, and the topic is Own Your History, or your history is going to own you. So good to see you folks coming in. Thanks for say, saying hi. Um, this is Facebook Live initially. It will go onto YouTube later on. So in case you're watching me there, it was on Facebook first. So comments and interactive stuff that happens will be on was on Facebook. And on YouTube, you won't be able to do that. Well, sorry, you'll be able to comment, but you won't be able to see what happens. So I'll attempt to um, state what people post. So that way, if you're watching somewhere where there aren't any comments, you'll know what I'm talking about. Deal? Okay. So. Welcome to my talk, and I'll, I'll put a link in at the end, um, how to reach out for me for a, for a discovery session if you want, because this may bring up stuff for you you want to talk about. So, own your history, or your history is going to own you. Literally what this means is you can't ignore the past, <laughs> simply put. Not only can you not ignore the past, you, you don't want, un, let, me, let me rephrase that. First of all, you can't ignore the past. Secondly, if you have a past that wasn't ideal, you don't want to let it, let it run rampant. And if you don't do something about it, it will run rampant, just to be clear. So let me give you some framing to so understand where I'm coming from. And first I want to give a props and thanks to my friend Damona Hoffman, whose um, live online radio show is on this morning, uh, which will be which I'll put the links up on Monday, I'll get the links from her to so be posting next week. We went live today. And it was a rich conversation, and this type, this the title from my broadcast today came through as a response to something she said. So I'm giving her props because she inspired me. <laughs> so that's the starting point. So what do I mean by this? Literally, I keep using it's funny. I used that this morning in my talk. Literally seems to be the word that's coming up for me a lot today. So I'll attempt to use other words besides literally because it's getting annoying that I keep saying it. It's amazing the word sort of floats in your consciousness. So. What I mean by your history is everything that came before now, like, duh, that's so obvious. But what it, it, what it really means is your past relationships, your past experiences of love, and in particular, what happened in your childhood. Yes, I'm gonna talk about your childhood. Oh, not that again. Seriously, if you don't talk about this, work it out, clarify it, resolve it, it's gonna keep affecting you, which is what I mean. If you don't deal with the past, it will keep running over your future. As in, if you don't own your past history, your history will own you, and this is what I mean. If you were someone who was raised in a, for example, no, no, actually, let me try the other way around. If you experience relationships that become abusive to you on any level, way, shape, or form, I pretty much guarantee you, especially if you have it in several relationships, that this history started a long time ago. And if you're still having the experience of being abused, and I'm using that intentionally to scare some people, then it means your history is running the show. So literally, because you haven't, and use that word again, history, literally, because you haven't resolved your patterns from the past, they're still happening now, which means the history that you haven't resolved in the past is still running. So again, not only history, history owns you. So if you're someone whose relationship patterns, relationship um, experiences are repeating themselves and it's not what you want, this is for you. If you're someone who has relationships that are all very different and they have different experiences and it's always fun and joyful and exciting, you won't have to worry about this. You may have already done the work or maybe there's never happened an issue with this. Maybe your life is so perfect from the get-go that there's nothing to work on. <laughs> I was gonna say good luck with that because it's so rare. But there are people out there who like that, so what can I say? And there are also people who don't actually know anything about the consciousness journey or the personal growth work, so they don't even actually wake up to the fact that there's something to work on. So they're, they're oblivious, that's another way of doing it. But if you're awake and wondering how to deal with this, this might give you some insights and clarity on what you want to do. So, your home, well, let me, no, no, your homework, I'm start there, ready? No, let's start another way. I'll ask you to look at your past marriage, 
or relationships or combination of the three, or two or six, however it's been. And notice if there's been some common thread experiences in your life. And consider what common threads, common themes, common experiences, common res um, um, arguments, commonalities that happen between this relationship you're in and one before that, one before that. If you're in one now, you might experience the same thing again. If it is something like your partner is a workaholic or your partner cheats on you or your partner doesn't love you enough. I mean, there's a whole range of things it can be, but if it's the same thing that happens every single time, there's a hint. It ain't about them, it's about you. Now, not only is it about you, but more, more often than not, it's, but it's about you as you were when you were younger. I'll get to that in a second. So a couple of things I want to throw on the table for you to think about if you are dealing with this as an adult. If your relationship, ex relationship cycles are going the same result where you're getting abused, or there's an addiction in your, your partner's dealing with addiction, or you always have the same argument about, you don't love me enough, which I did the one yesterday, the one earlier. Okay, let me try another one. I'm just making sure I get a, a wide gamut of options here that might include you so you know what I'm talking about. If you're, so, if you're a lot of it, I know a lot of it, trust me, I'm going to get the answers in this, I'm just laying out the groundwork. If, what did, what did one, didn't I cover on here? Well, if your relationship with your partner always lies to you, yes, lies to you. And that's not unusual, it's happened before and before and before. This, I want to make sure you get some starting points because something, if your relationship history has not been perfect, there's going to be several iterations of the same problem happening again and again and again from the past. So whatever one that is for you, join me as we go back in history. <laughs> so as you go back to your past and you look at your younger life, particularly your teens and preteens, consider, if you will, this is like doing Twilight Zone here, <laughs> but consider, if you will, your childhood upbringing. In particular, how the adults around you acted, how they performed, how they presented, how they shared, how they loved, how they treated you, and how they treated each other. Because it's not, not just how they treat you, it's how they treat everybody around you. Because what's happening is, not only are you feeling how they treat you, but you're witnessing how they treat each other. And both of those go into your subconscious, like they're going into a filing cabinet, a storage arena, which is not something that you think about all the time. You may have been noticing, if you are aware, looking back at your childhood, and some of this stuff, now, sorry, caveat for a second. If you suffered some deep trauma as a child, some of this stuff may not be at the surface. You may not be able to reference this. And this is a deeper topic we can talk about offline. Or you go, if you're seeing a therapist, great, getting some support because these things can get really deep. But if it's something you just know or you're aware of when you're growing up, that maybe your parents always argued in front of you, or maybe your father beat up your mother too much, or maybe your mother was alcoholic, or whatever it was. And, and again, you have your own stories. This is not what I'm saying you had that, but you might have experienced this. So if you have clarity on the way that your parents acted that wasn't what you look at now as being ideally loving. So you will know for yourself if the way they treated each other was less than loving, caring, compassionate, joyful, uplifting, celebratory, etc, etc, etc. You know for yourself. Whatever it wasn't that doesn't, what it, whatever it was that doesn't fit that, as in what, is, what it wasn't that, is something you've taken on as being some rules that you've got inside tied to the way you think love should be expressed. I've talked about this before, this is not unusual. But I wish you get the point this way because I'm realizing more and more this is not being learned, this is a lesson people aren't learning. And this is a big piece of what's getting in the way of you having what you want in a relationship. Let me say that one again, that's important. If you don't deal with this, it's going to mess up your love life from here on out. Got your attention now? This is big stuff because for a lot of people they go, no, it's okay, I'll just go on another date. I'll go on Tinder or I'll go on Bumble or I'll go on some other app and swipe and meet somebody and be fine. It's uncanny, one would say, one would suggest, that if you don't deal with this, that even though you said, I'm fine, I'm going to move on, I'm going to go swipe and meet somebody else, that person you go out with, 90% of the time, I won't say 100%, but 90% of the time, will bring up the same pattern you had before. Like, how did they know? Because it's in you. And until you resolve it, heal it, transform it, it's going to keep repeating itself with every single relationship. Actually, no, not true most relationships, let me be clear. I've got to be clear that I don't want to say it's always this way because that's way too limiting. This is like most of the time because I've seen it from experience. I've been, I've been seeing it with hundreds of people and I've also looked at my own life and see how I ran the same patterns myself that I've done from childhood. 
So looking back, to recap again, at your childhood and noticing what the adult man you did when it came to loving. Did they show affection? Did they touch each other with caring? Or did they touch each other with abuse? Did they avoid each other and not talk to each other about love? Did they drink a lot or smoke a lot or do other things that may not have been the ideals of love, but that's the way you saw love when you were a child without knowing anything different? Because as a child, you may not have known right from wrong, which is the right way to love and the wrong way to love. But what you did do is take in that belief and put it inside yourself in a subconscious way. Because that's the way we're wired as children. We learn by watching everything around us and taking it in as a sponge. Fast forward to your adult life and notice, if you will, <laughs> to go back to the Twilight Zone uh, framing or phrasing, and look at your adult relationships, primarily your romantic relationships. I would almost guarantee, because this is the way we work as human psychology, that your relationship patterns that you've been running, especially in the, uh, your early ones, in your teens, 20s, and even your 30s, maybe even until now, if you haven't done anything about it, where the same experience you have with your partner reminds you of how your parents' relationship was, or how your relationship with your uncles were, or your teachers even. There's different framing depending on which adults you were most, most close to when you were younger. But the reality of this is your connection to this thread is, a good, is good news actually. By having a recognition of this thread means you can actually unravel it. And this is the thing, as I said, the, the title of this is about own your history or history will own you. Dealing with that thread of um, repeated patterns, repeated behaviors, repeated beliefs, re repeated mannerisms, whatever it was, by undoing that thread and changing the wiring, changing the history, you then basically, um, you take, charge, you take charge of your own history. You, you actually rewrite your history, so then you rewrite your future. And that changes the paradigm. So instead of being having I mean, history run you, you'll be running history the way you want to, which is taking control of it and allowing you to reframe it so you can get it what you want. Because when you start disengaging that, and you take apart your history, so you no longer have abuse tied to your loving, or alcoholism tied to your loving, or arguments tied to your loving. There's a theme here, you know. Once you disengage those, then your history no longer has to invo no, has no longer have to influence your adult relationships, and if that's what you want, this is the way to do it. Go back, have a look, see whether things mirror, match, copy what you did when you're adult and from a child, or you saw as a child. Take those apart. That does involve some work with somebody else, by the way, usually a counselor or a coach like myself, and then you can rewrite your future in a way you want it to. Simple stuff, really. <laughs> it takes some time though but I want to make sure you get this point that it's not immutable, not immutable that whatever you had in your history that started when you were a child is not cast in concrete you can change it and it's one of these things that I've talked about quite a lot in my talks and in my coaching it's in my book as well by the way is that the history we carry around about ourselves that history we learn from when we're younger is malleable as much as you think it's cast in stones, it's already done, it. you can't change it. It's like, no, it is changeable. It's actually in your filing cabinet, so to speak. And we, you can go into your filing cabinet, take out the files and rewrite them. Yes, you can change your history. This is how you take control of it again. And by doing so, you actually change your future. And with that, you can transform your life completely. Now, just so you know, this paradigm I'm talking about, this reframing, rewriting, re-creating, um, doesn't just apply to relationships. It applies to your health, it applies to money, it applies to any area in your life. So this teaching, by the way, trans is, is um, transcendent of just relationship, but this is the area I specialize in. So if this is something you want to work on, again, I'll put the link in the comments for how you can reach out for a discovery session, um, and we can talk about this, because it helps to get someone else's viewpoint and to get some clarity, because the insights someone else can give you, you won't get for yourself, just the way it is. That's why I always recommend that you work with somebody else, make sure that they're working with somebody else. So I'm like, you're working with a coach, Make sure they have a coach. I do, by the way. If you're working with somebody who's a coach, doesn't have their own coach, or doesn't have their own program they're in, or some study that some place they're studying, you might want to think about seeking help from somebody else because that is the journey. You're always growing and learning, and you can only be better by getting help to be better. So that was a bit of a detour, but I hope you get my point. So having said all that, I invite you to look at your own history and look at your relationship history recently and see how any of, any of the patterns, any experiences, any of the things happened then mirror what happened in your past. Because if you change your past, 
you can change your future. And the great news is you can change your past so you can change your future. So you own your history so it doesn't own you. I think I made my point. Um, again, I'll put the link in the comments for a discovery session because if you want to get help with this, I advise you not to wait but to take action. Step forward now. And I hope you do get some understanding from this. This is not the um, easy thing like swiping and get a date. No, but if you want to stop wasting your swipes and get what you really want, this is the way to do it. So with that, I just want to remind you to thank, I want to thank you for watching. I want to remind you that this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I also put this onto YouTube and onto my podcast. I'll give you the links for those as well. Um, all my Facebook Lives go onto my business page, which is barryselby.author. This is on my personal page first, by the way, in case you're wondering. And that's the interactive one. So business page where it gets replayed with all my other broadcasts. It also goes into my YouTube channel, which like all my social media is my name, which is Barry Selby. The same Facebook, Facebook business page is barryselby.author. Make sure I said that already. My YouTube channel and my um, all my social media is Barry Selby. So the channel on YouTube is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. You can also there go into there and there's a playlist under my channel, which is Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of these broadcasts as you choose to. And also my podcast, which is on iTunes, is also called Messages from the Masculine, which you can also subscribe to. Also subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, either one, both of them. And you can then download the audios and listen to my talks when you're out working out, driving, cycling, whatever you're doing. I'm here to serve. I hope this makes sense to you. And if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in the comments below and I'll respond or I sign off. Again, I'll put the link to my discovery session in the comments as well. Um, so I invite you to join me tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is my daily broadcast, inspirational talk, um, reminder about loving, being better in love and having more love and how to take care of yourself. And I trust it helps. Um, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Same time, same bat channel. Be well. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Bye.